Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. McNair and this is the 2008 uh, OGT questions specifically from the geometry and spatial sense, sense portion. Um, what I would suggest you do is go ahead and pause the video real quick and read through the tips. Alright, number four here. The figure shows two views of the same object. These are two views of the same object. Same object here. So, it says which net will make the figure shown. Now a net when we're talking about a net, we're talking about a figure, a two-dimensional figure that you could fold to make a three-dimensional figure. All right. So in all of these choices, we're folding this net along these lines here. Okay. So um, now a couple things that you should take notice of. Number one, in the original figure, you see that you have one vertical line and you have one horizontal line. So that should be the same thing in the net. So which of these choices has one vertical line and one horizontal line? Well, that would be A. So A is our answer. All right, you can cancel out all the other choices because they're either not horizontal, one is not horizontal and one is not vertical. All right, great. Number 13, the coordinates of triangle KLM are K is negative two, negative five, L is zero, one, and M is six, negative two. Real quick, just to make sure you uh, remember this, this is very important. Every ordered pair goes X first and then Y second, okay? Make sure you know that concept. Now, the question says, what type of triangle is KLM? Well, <clears throat> let's go through our choices. Obtuse. Obtuse means that you have one angle that's larger than 90 degrees. Now, out of these angles here, K, L, and M, do any of those angles look like they're larger than 90 degrees? Now, you should be able to tell what 90 degrees is because if you looked at the corner of a page, this would be the 90 degree angle here. Okay, so are there any angles that look like they're bigger than 90 degrees? No, none of those do. Okay, so um, we can cancel out that choice. So it can't be A. Um, acute. Now, acute means that you have all of your angles less than 90 degrees. Okay, are all of our angles less than 90 degrees here? Yes. Scalene. Scalene is talking about our um, are all the sides not equal to each other? Well, that one's a little bit harder to tell. So let's kind of go through our choices and see if we find anything else. Now, C and D, C and D both have right, uh, are both right triangles. Do any of the angles K, L, or M look like they could be right angles? No, so we can cancel out D and C. So the only logical choice here would be B. All right, let's review a little bit here. Some basic triangle information. All angles in a triangle must add up to 180 degrees. So, for example here, in this red triangle, I tell you, well, the directions say find the value of x. So, um, if I looked at the red triangle and I was trying to find x, what would x be? Well, I would know that 45 plus 75 plus x had to equal 180. Well, I know that 45 plus 75 is 120. And then to solve for x, I would subtract 120 from both sides. So I would know that x equals 60. All right, so this would have to be 60. Same thing in the blue triangle. In the blue triangle, I know that the angles have to add up to 180, so 20 plus 80 plus whatever x is has to be 180. And you probably can figure that out without even doing anything. Um, 100 plus x equals 180. So what does x have to be? x would have to be 80. All right, same thing in the black triangle. Here, 120 plus 35 plus x has to equal 180 degrees. So we know that 120 plus 35 is 155. And then we can subtract 155 from both sides to find out what x is. And you would say, oh, x equals 25 degrees. Okay. All right, let's move on. Classifying triangles by angles. 
an acute triangle in an acute triangle all angles have to be less than 90 degrees like in this red triangle you have no angle that is greater than 90 or equal to 90 so they all have to be less than 90 degrees in this right triangle here in the right triangle you have one angle that equals 90 degrees all right it doesn't necessarily matter what the other angles are as long as one angle equals 90 and remember this box here that box means that we're talking about 90 degrees all right in an obtuse triangle one angle has to be greater than 90 degrees you just have one angle that's bigger than 90 their whole triangle is classified as obtuse all right and then classifying triangles by sides in a scalene triangle, none of the sides are equal. Like here, we have 5, 8, and 9. So since none of the sides are equal to each other, it's scalene. In this other triangle here in the middle, we have, it's called isosceles. It means that you have two sides that are equal. Okay, so here 11 equals 11, so those two sides are equal to each other, therefore it's isosceles. And an equilateral triangle has all sides equal to each other, 8, 8, and 8. Okay? All right, if I were you, I would probably put that on your cheat sheet, um, something that you could kind of memorize before you do the test. All right, number 34. The vertices of a triangle are 1, 3, 2, 1, and 5, 0. Triangle 1 is reflected across the x-axis, resulting in triangle 2. Triangle 2 is then rotated 180 degrees about the origin, resulting in triangle 3. In your answer document, draw and label triangles 1, 2, and 3 on the same coordinate plane. On the same coordinate plane. And then um, describe a single transformation that would map triangle 1 directly onto triangle 3. All right. Um, in this problem, I would always read it twice. So I'll suggest you do that again. You read that again. The first thing that we're going to do here is um, actually draw out and graph triangle 1. So they tell us that the vertices are 1, 3, 2, 1, and 5, 0. All right, this is triangle 1. Now remember, every ordered pair goes x first, y second. Okay, so in triangle 1, we're just going to graph these one by one. So one, three, this is the one is your X, the three is your Y. So we go to the one on the X axis and then we go up three on the Y axis. So there's one, three. Then we have two, one, two, one. There's that point. And then we have the point five, zero. Five, zero is here. Five on the X axis, zero on the Y. Just to make sure you know, let me label my axis. Your Y axis is your vertical and this is your X axis, your horizontal. All right, I'm going to go ahead and draw lines to connect it because it did say it was a triangle. So here is our triangle. Okay, so that's triangle one. Now it said um, to draw and label triangles one, two, and three. So let me go ahead and label that as well. This is triangle one. Okay, I'll just put it in here. Whoops. Triangle one. All right. Now, um, triangle two is, uh, triangle one is reflected across the x-axis to make triangle two. So once again, this is our x-axis right here. This is our x-axis. So we're reflecting it across that. Okay, so we're pretty much just, a reflection is kind of like flipping it over that line. Right? It kind of makes a mirror image. So your x-axis is kind of like your mirror. Okay, so if I took this point 5, 0 and reflected it, it would still be at 5, 0 because it's actually on the x-axis. Now, when you're reflecting, it has to be the same distance away from um, the line that you're reflecting has to be the same different distance away from the point. Like this point here is one away from the x-axis. So your new point needs to be one away from the x-axis on the other direction. Okay? Same thing here. This point right here is three away from the x-axis. So our new point has to also be three away from the x-axis. So there we go. We've made our vertices of the triangle. So we're just going to connect the dots. And there you go. There's our triangle too.
Okay. Now the next one says triangle two is then rotated 180 degrees about the origin, resulting in triangle three. Now, when you rotate something 180 degrees, it's pretty much just like doing two reflections. It reflects across one axis and then the other. Okay. It doesn't matter which axis you do as long as it's re reflected across which axis you do first as long as it's reflected across both axes you can reflect it across here let's we can reflect it across this axis and then reflect it across this axis or you can reflect it across the x axis then the y axis now the easiest way to do this problem, because you know that a rotation of 180 degrees about the origin is just like doing two reflections, you can kind of notice that it's pretty much like going from two back up to one and then reflecting one across the y-axis. All right, so let's do that. So we're going to take image one and reflect it across the y-axis. So let me do this. So this point here is one away from the y-axis. So our new point has to be one away from the y-axis. So we're going to put that there. This point here is two away from the y-axis. So our new point has to be two away from the y-axis. And this point here is five away from the y-axis. So our new point has to be five away from the axis. All right, and then once again, we're going to connect our dots with straight lines. So get a different color here. So here's that line, this one, and this one. And there's our image three. Okay, once again, rotating something by 180 degrees means you flip it across the, you reflect it across the x-axis and the y-axis. It's two reflections. All right, so um, we did this first part here. We've done all of that. Now the next part says describe a single transformation that would map triangle one onto triangle three. Well, going from triangle one to triangle three, if you notice, it's just a reflection across the y-axis. So you would say um, reflect across the y-axis. Reflect across the y-axis to go from um, triangle 1 to triangle 3. And there you go. All right. 37. An airline executive drew a sketch of a logo on a napkin. She gave the logo to a graphic designer so he could map, make a mathematical, mathematically similar version with a computer drawing program. The center line of the new logo needs to be 10 centimeters long. Which of these proportions could the graphic designer use to find the value of y? So. Here, we're trying to find the value of y. Whenever you're doing proportions, all right, you need to make sure that corresponding values are in the same position. Meaning, um, for example, let's look at a. Here, we're, com we're comparing 4 to 3.8. So in my diagram, here's my 4, and then here's my 3.8. All right, so let me change this color down here. Okay, so there's my 4 and 3.8. And then we're comparing that to y. So y, oops, y should be compared to 10. Well, if you notice, the 4.8 and the y don't go together, all right? Because that's not consistent, they, they don't correspond, it couldn't have been A. All right, then let's go to B. Let's try that one out. B, you have 3.8. So if I do 3.8 here in the blue, compare that to Y. And then 6.8. 
in comparison to 10. Well, see, those aren't corresponding parts, again. All right, so we know that that one couldn't be it either. Let's look at C. We've got a 6.8 here over 4.0. So here's 4.0. And then we have Y, which is here, over 10.0. Oops. Change the color. So notice that those correspond with each other. So those, that would be our correct pro proportion. All right, next. When a marble hits a wall, it bounces off the wall at the same angle it hits the wall. So this was 22, and therefore this is also 22. If a marble hits a wall at 22-degree 20, angle, what is the measure of the angle between the two paths of the marble? Now, one thing that you should know about a line is that every line contains 180 degrees. Okay? So, since we have a total of 180 degrees, we know that 22 plus 22 plus some value has to equal 180 degrees. Well, 22 plus 22 is 44 and then subtract 44 from both sides, we get that x has to be 136. So that would be c. OK? Great. Once again, every line has a measure of 180 degrees. What's the value of x here? So this one is 60. This is 100. So Therefore, we have a total of 160 so far, so in here, x has to be 20. All right, great. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you, and good luck studying for your test.